So, Hello BookTube, I'm back with a video and this week I want to discuss Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie. So I read this book uh, two months ago for the uh, Optimist Discord book club and we had a nice discussion about it um, and I had some more thoughts so I thought I wanted to elaborate it a bit further into a discussion video. Uh, it will be a bit spoilery, it's not a very plot heavy book but um, if you don't want to be spoiled at all for what happens in the book, then um, you have been warned. So, first of all, just my, my general feelings. I really like the book. I love the language. Um, Rushdie really has a grasp for kind of giving the right sounds to all the characters and to you know, really kind of changing the voice of the n n narration to really fit these characters, which I really loved. Um, at the same time, he is a bit hard to read. I think he likes his run-on sentences and he's like squishing words together to kind of give the right flavor to the uh, text, but also, um, yeah, it makes it hard to read, I guess, especially if you're not a native speaker. Um, my, my biggest criticism of the book was that the different plot points, and there's a number of different scenes and subplots that never really seem to get tied together or it's not really clear what the link is and there's the the imam subplot which kind of fits into the theme but it's only like a couple of pages and isn't tied into the rest of the story at all and you kind of wonder why it's there excepting to like specifically poke fun at Khomeini who, who's obviously parodying um, but yeah, so you're not entirely sure what the point of that is compared to the rest of the story. Uh, and that, of course, ties into the, the huge controversy that this book is uh, known for. Controversy is maybe the wrong word, but the very negative reaction it received in some places. Uh, and I haven't done enough research to really meaningfully comment about that. So um, I'm going to stay in my lane and not say too much more about it, except to point out that when a religious leader who is also a uh, dictator of a large country which is involved in all kinds of political turmoil at the time decides to take certain actions maybe we shouldn't just take him at face value when he says what the reasons for those actions are especially not when he's being personally uh, parodied or made fun of in the book he's condemning um so but that, that that does kind of tie in to the themes of the book which is about kind of reality and narratives and what to believe um, and that, that's the one theme of the book and the power you know the truth objective truth of religion or the subjective truth of religion and whether it matters whether it is an objective or subjective truth and the other theme is immigration and racism and it was kind of it's one hand it's interesting to you know this book's always you hear about the book, it's always in connection uh, with the, 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 the anger it raised in the Muslim world and the of certain parts of the Muslim community and uh, because of the blasphemy in it uh, that those people um, really saw in it. But at the same time, it's a very strong indictment of the way immigrants are treated in the West and it tackles issues of you know, police brutality and immigration policy it feels extremely topical uh, in a way that's kind of depressing for a book that is about the same age I am. It kind of you know, points to the fact that we haven't really progressed much in those issues. Uh, and, and that's been completely overshadowed in how the book is now received or thought about. So getting back to the theme that spoke to me most, uh, the kind of what is truth? What can you believe? The first point is that the book is narrated, we find out relatively near the start, by the devil. It's not explicitly stated, but it is very, very strongly hinted uh, in a way that makes clear that our narrator is the devil. So that immediately at least makes me suspicious. Like, can we trust the narrator of this book? Are we getting the full story or not? I mean, hard to think of a more unreliable narrator than the devil, right? Um, and then following on, this is kind of interesting. So some things in the book that are 
quite supernatural in, in currents are presented as objective truths, right? The things that are clearly, according to the narrator, really objectively happening in the universe of this book. So there is, at the beginning, you know, when Gabriel and Saladin survive their fall out of the exploding airplane, that's presented as something that is truly objectively happening. It's not metaphorical, it is literally happening. The same thing with uh, Saladin's change into a goat person or, or an avatar of the devil. It's again presented as something that is literally objectively happening and that is objectively true in the universe that the characters in this book inhabit. On the other hand, Gabriel's metamorphosis <coughs> into an avatar of the archangel is much more ambiguous. So um, I haven't gone back to reading detail, but I'm pretty sure some things are kind of stated as objectively happening. Like I think he does develop a halo at some point, but his revelations, uh, especially near the end of the book, it's made very unclear whether he's actually having revelations, whether he's actually having visions or whether he's just um, mentally ill and it's just psychotic. Whether God exists is also incredibly ambiguous right, throughout the book. Right? The devil obviously exists because he's narrating it to us and we could extrapolate from that and assume that well if the devil exists therefore God must also exist but the book never confirms that. Right? There's the scenes with Mahound who gets all kinds of revelations but it's very unclear whether those come from God, whether they come from Gabriel just making them up or whether they come from Mahound kind of subliminally putting his words into Gabriel's mouth and forcing Gabriel to say certain things because that's what he wants to hear. And it therefore kind of really muddies the waters as to what is true and what isn't. At the same time, it kind of muddies the water, kind of asks the question, does it matter if it's something is objectively true? You know, if some people believe in it enough, it becomes kind of true all of its own. So we have the um, demonization of the immigrants and the immigrants turning into animals, other kinds of strange creatures because of the power of the, the xenophobes creating this narrative about immigrants, which in the book is presented as ob something that's objectively happening. But of course, that's kind of irrelevant whether it objectively happens because it's kind of creating a, a metaphor for what happens in our world where certain narratives are created and put about about immigrants and, and refugees demonizing them and that strongly influences the treatment they receive even though it doesn't literally turn them into goat people or other types of animals but still you know that narrative doesn't have this objective magical power but does have the power to shape and change how we treat these people. In the same way, regardless of where the religious revelations, for example, the moon gets in the book come from, they obviously clearly have real power and clearly shape how people behave um, in real life. And so whether it's objectively true or not, is perhaps not the most interesting question to ask of an idea. And it's perhaps more interesting to ask, you know, what will you do with the power that this idea has given you? Which is the second question that Salman Rushdie says all ideas are asked. Right? What will you do now that you have power? And, and the same thing with the, the final scene of the, the uh, pilgrimage to the sea, where the objective truth seems to be that all these people just walked into the sea and drowned. But subjectively, they seem to have experienced the sea opening for them. And it's left unclear, at least in the text of the book, you know, it could be that this is just a hallucination that they're having. It could be that it kind of actually happens and their souls move on to this other plane of existence and their bodies drown. But they as people are souls. You know, for them, the sea did indeed open and they did walk to a kind of spiritual Mecca. And, and you can ask, you know, does it matter whether that is an objective truth if these people subjectively experienced it that way? 
And that was a very interesting tension that runs throughout the whole book. Um, and what made it a very interesting read for me. So while I do wish that he could have tied together the plots a bit more tightly in the end to kind of maybe reinforce and contrast this theme throughout the different plots because they did seem a bit unconnected. On the whole, I did enjoy thinking about those aspects of the book. And I'd be really interested to hear what your thoughts are in this regard. And um, if you read the book, you know, what you think about how much of what is described in the book objectively happens. Can we trust the narrator or not? And in how far does it matter whether ideas that motivate people to take real actions in the world, whether they are objectively true or not? Or should we perhaps judge ideas more by the outcomes they cause and, and what actions they cause people to take rather than whether we can historically confirm that certain things happened. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts in the comments uh, and hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.